But when it's time to turn the boost up, a water to air intercooler will help you keep the temperatures down. All right guys, Pat here with Aeroflow Performance. So welcome back to another tech video for some of our new products. These water to air intercoolers are probably a little bit less known compared to say your standard air to air intercooler, which most people use. Um, and look, it's mostly, these type of things are mostly a, a, a motorsport choice um, because packaging on a street car can be a little bit more involved, but it's nothing to be scared about. So there's no reason why you can't run one of these on a street car. Uh, it's actually quite easy. So let's go through a few of the benefits, some of the features, uh, and the way it all works. So most people will probably be familiar with an air-to-air -air intercooler. I'll put a photo in here somewhere, where you've basically mounted it in the front of the car usually. Air goes in one side, the compressed air goes in one side, comes out the other, and then into your throttle body in a turbocharged application. That large core sits at the front of the vehicle because it relies on cooling air to come through from the front of the vehicle as you're driving forward and that air flows over the core of the intercooler and it exchanges the heat so the heat that's been soaked into the core itself from the charge pipes gets basically taken away with the cool air that's running through it and that's what allows the intercooler to cool the charge air once it's come from your turbocharger or supercharger for example the difference being with a water to air intercooler is as in the name might suggest water is pumped through the core and then back out again or over the core i should say and then back out again to exchange that heat so your charge we'll use this one as an example the charge goes in it's coming out the other side but on the top here you'll see these dash 12 orb ports and that's where you're going to plumb in some lines for coolant or water that's going to flow in, get to the bottom, turn around and come back out. And as the coolant goes in and it comes out, as it's running over the intercooler core that's inside, that's taking the heat away from that heat sink material and then it's returning it back out to either a heat exchanger or uh, perhaps an ice box. So that's effectively how they, how they work. Rather than air going through the core and taking the heat away, it's a coolant or water that's going through there to do it. Now, how do we set up those coolant lines, the ports, uh, what's, the, what's the function of them and, and, and how would we set that up in a car? There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. The two most common will be, you're either using a heat exchanger, which is one of these, units here, we've got our universal heat exchangers. I'll touch a little bit more on those later. Or you can run a water tank or an ice tank. So you fabricate or purchase something off the shelf that uh, has a volume of water in it, and then you can add ice to make sure that that water is extra cold. That is then pumped using a water pump of some kind. These are our little heat exchanger pumps from the tank to the, to the intercooler and then back to the tank again. Now, the only downside of the tank version, the ice tank version, is if it's a street car, it's quite easy for that water, because it's cycling around in a, in a closed system, it's quite easy for that water to get quite warm. If it's a drag racing application or a short run, short sprint style application, then it's fine because you basically dump a bag of ice in it, it gets icy cold, you're only gonna use it for you know one pass, maybe two passes or something like that. And then you can either drain it or you can just add more ice depending on the volume of your, of your system. So that's a great way to keep it nice and cool. However, if you've got a street car or something that's a little bit more endurance long-term, you're gonna to wanna to look at perhaps a heat exchanger system where you'll still run a smaller reservoir to have a reasonable volume of fluid or coolant or water. But then from that reservoir, it's gonna bypass through the tank, then it's gonna go through the heat exchanger. Now what that's gonna do is work just like your radiator uh, would for the engine. So you mount that in the front of the vehicle, cool air flows over the top of it, like our air to air intercooler. The coolant goes through there, it gets cooled down, 
and then it's back into the reservoir. So effectively, that's like your radiator for the engine, it's constantly passing the water through and the air flowing through it is keeping that temperature much more consistently lower than what it would be if it was just in a closed, closed system cycling and cycling through again. There's only so much that the, the coolant or the water can absorb when it comes to heat before that has to be again passed on. So if you think about the coolant, it's a, it, it's, it is basically a function to move the heat elsewhere. So your compressor is creating the heat because it's compressing all that air down, makes it really hot. It goes into the intercooler, then your coolant takes it away and then it has to be removed somehow. So the heat exchanger is something that's gonna work constantly while you're driving. That air's just gonna consistently flow through it. And then you have nice consistent intake temps. And that's what it's all about. So to make good power, to make consistent power, reliable power, you want your intake temperatures to be consistent and as low as possible so that you get the biggest bang for your buck once it gets to the motor. Let's go over a couple of specs uh, on these cores. So they can be mounted really anywhere that you can fit them. So physically, there's a few different sizes and styles that we have. And that's basically to do with the amount of flow and the horsepower level um, that you're talking to. We've got the smaller square unit here, this flat, tall one, then we've got the big square unit and then the big Bertha over here, which realistically, this is probably more motorsport spec that you're gonna put in the front of a drag sort of vehicle. Now, they have anywhere from a three inch to a four inch uh, intake and outlet or inlet and outlet. You can mount them at the front of the car, the rear of the car, wherever it is that you're gonna fit it up. As you can see, they're not actually that big. So it's fairly easy to put that in the front of a vehicle or this one even in an engine bay, for example. And then you're gonna plumb your coolant in and out of it. They're rated to 150 PSI as far as the pressure is concerned internally. Uh, they also have dash 12 ORB ports for the coolant in and out. So you can change that to whatever it is appropriate for your coolant lines. The larger, the better though. So we would suggest not stepping them down if possible. The more, or the larger the coolant lines are, the more volume you end up having in the whole system. So the more volume, the better, the more efficient it works. The big bonus when it comes to these type of cores, because they are so short effectively, when it comes to your charge air going in and then the cool air coming out, is they have a very low pressure drop across them. So you're talking about less than one PSI pressure drop across the core. In the smaller units, that can actually be even lower. So very, very low pressure drop, which means that you're not gonna lose anything from the compressor, whether it's a turbo or a supercharger to your throttle body, which is great because on average with a water to wear, uh, sorry, with an air to wear intercooler, they're much larger. So across that larger volume of area, you're gonna lose a bit of pressure. Um, that's why a water to wear is quite handy. Moving on to the heat exchangers, we have two universal designs uh, that we have with these heat exchangers. We have a slimline unit, and then we have the larger universal unit. Both have the same core design, uh, so they're very efficient. Obviously, sizing basically depends on the application, both horsepower and fitment. Uh, this one, for example, the smaller unit that we have here was originally designed for uh, LSA swaps, so the supercharged GM motor, uh, into, say, an early Commodore, uh, which was quite popular here in Australia. This would fit quite easily into the front of that early model Holden Commodore with very minimal modification, almost no modification because of the size. Then obviously we had some other people that were mounting in different vehicles or they were willing to modify their vehicle a little bit more. So they wanted a larger, larger core for a higher volume uh, and more efficiency. So we put the larger unit in there. Both of them have the same Dash 12 ORB ports uh, for inlet and outlet for the coolant. They also have the little M6 mounts. Little M6 mounts, top and bottom. So it's nice and easy to mount them. You know, keep them nice and stable and well supported. And then they have this 1 8 MPT bleeder port that's 
it should always be positioned on the top of the tank. So we would call this the top of the tank so that you can bleed the system out. So just like your radiator, your cooling system for the engine, you want to make sure that there's no air in these because that will be less efficient. It will increase the amount of pressure in the system and potentially lead to failures or just poor working. Um, yeah, very little effectiveness for the, for the combination. Then when we come across to our water pumps. So these are actually designed as a replacement for the factory LSA water pump. Um, so we use those, they fit in basically the same position. We have two versions, there's a one inch barb and then the three quarter inch barb on these. So nice and simple, so you can just push a rubber hose on there if you need. So they effectively flow 46 litres per minute for the one inch barb and then the three quarter is 40 litres per minute. So again, it's just, you know, what's appropriate to your system, you know, is it a maximum effort application or is it something that's, you know, quite a, a mild streeter that you just need to circulate that water. So you can choose whichever one suits you. But as we always say, the larger volume, the larger barbs, the larger hose, the more volume of coolant or water you can have in the system, the better. So try and over-engineer your application. All right, guys, now you know all about these water-to-air intercooler cores and our heat exchangers. If you need a little bit more help choosing which one is maybe right for your application, feel free to shoot us an email, boosted at aeroflowperformance.com, or drop us a DM on one of the socials, whether it's Insta, Facebook, or TikTok, and we'll happily help you out. You can check out all these products at your local distributor, quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com.